Hi everyone, for wherever you sign up for Mobisys 2020 in the world. I'm Chris from University of Edinburgh, and this talk is about how to use low-cost millimeter wave radar for indoor mapping. With our long-term goal to allow better emergency response on the low visibility situations. This work was done when I was a postdoc at Oxford University, jointly with my awesome colleagues, as well as Jack from University of Virginia. So about two years ago, our group started to think about how to change the safety landscape of first responders, who are regarded as one of the dangerous jobs in the world. Despite many new technologies coming out, the safety issue of fire battery is still unsolved and occupies news headlines 10 to 10. A recent report states that over a 10-year period in the United States, more than 2,000 fire battles are died on duty. So why is this occupation so risky and fatal? Well, there are many reasons, but most of the deaths of first responders are due to their lack of spatial awareness, such as getting trapped or unable to perceive the obstacles due to the low visibility. A map that can describe the target environment is often absent or inaccurate, not to mention the intensive dynamics in many emergency situations. These challenges inspire us to consider a safe alternative, where we use a mobile robot to explore the environment first and send a good map as a reference to first responders. This idea sounds good, but another problem comes. What sensor should we use? Most sensors used for indoor mapping are optical sensors, such as RGB cameras, depth imaging sensor, or LiDAR. However, these sensors fall short here because they can't see through airborne particles such as smoke, dust, or fog, which are very common in different emergency situations like firefighting. So we need a new sensing modality here. The quest of a new sensor gives the main topic of this talk, namely the single chip MM wave radar. Because of the rapid advances in RF CMOS technology since 2017, the low-cost single-chip MM wave radar is not able to reduce footprint, power consumption, and its cost without performance loss. In fact, such a sensor is already allowing new sensing solutions to many automotive and industrial applications. Let me briefly introduce its working principles in case you don't have a clue about it. So in general, a MM wave radar is a transceiver device operating in the spectrum between 30 to 300 GHz. It works by using FMCW and transmits its waves to the surroundings. The transmitted wave can be reflected back by the objects in its view and received by the radar again. By mixing the transmitted and the received signals, the device can estimate the distance and orientation of ambient objects. Given such information, objects can be further projected into a 3D point cloud. A low-cost radar actually has several desirable features. For instance, it's able to provide very accurate ranging accuracy and has much smaller form factor than LiDAR or mechanical radars, fitting the payloads to a wide range of mobile robots. Because of its wavelengths, a particular feature interesting to us is its radio wave is immune to many environment conditions, such as fogs, dust, or smoke. These good features make the millimeter wave radar a very suitable sensor for indoor mapping on the low visibility. We therefore propose Minimap, a system uses robot-mounted single-chip radar for metric and semantic indoor mapping. Ideally, the generated map can be used by the first responders in subsequence. However, using this device for indoor metric mapping is far from being trivial and it requires solving several challenges. The first challenge is a very sparse point cloud for every scan of MM wave. Due to both fundamental reasons such as inherent signal specularity, as well as design reasons for much fewer antennas than massive MIMO systems. Meanwhile, some onboard preprocessing such as CIFAR also aggregate points that makes the point returns even sparser. As a result, the return point cloud of this device is as sparse as less than 100 points per scan which is more than 100 times sparser than a LiDAR. Besides the challenge of sparsity, we also need to deal with the challenge about multipass noise, which is a long-standing problem for RF-based technology. This is because the reflected MM wave arriving at a receiver antenna 
can come from two or more paths in indoor environment, coupled with the beam imperfection. As a result, there are long negligible amounts of ghost points in the return the point cloud. Apparently, and as you can imagine, you can't simply use a metric map directly generated by this radar, which will be very low quality due to the above two challenges. We therefore consider formulating the indoor metric mapping into a reconstruction problem and leverage the conditional generative adversarial network, a model that achieves great success in image reconstruction recently. Meanwhile, to cope with the label scarcity issue, we adopt a cross-modal supervised learning fashion, meaning the network takes inputs as MMWeb data and the model predictions are supervised by the data obtained from a co-located LiDAR, which is often accurate in benign environments. After the offline learning phase is done, the system can use only the millimeter wave radar to independently survey and reconstruct the indoor map of a target building, potentially a place for emergency response. So far we have introduced the reconstruction network model, but what about the network inputs? As we aim at a 2D map reconstruction, the most straightforward way is to project the 3D point cloud of a MMWave scheme into a 2D plane, and then use that image scheme to mimic the one given by a supervised LiDAR. However, as we can see on the right, the information absence of the MMWave is too much, due to the serious sparsity issue we introduced earlier. When we brute forcefully proceed the learning, the overfitting issue is significant, that leaves the model only able to learn the training data distribution, but hard to generalize to other scenarios. For this reason, we go for a different network input by stitching the scan series into a patch first with the assistance of a robot odometry. A patch here can be understood as a part of a map. And the main reason we are able to do so is that the dormitory drifts within a short interval is manageable, and the resultant patches preserve more geometry meaningful information and less perceptual aliasing. The LiDAR patch is created in a similar way. At this point, the network model is trained to reduce the total loss between the image patches of MMWave and LiDAR, bearing the goal of cross-model mimic. But what loss are we talking about here? Well, at a high level, our total loss can be interpreted from the base perspective. Essentially, the task of learning here is to maximize the posterior probability of three types of classes for each pixel, given the MMWeb data, namely free, occupied, and unknown. These three classes describe an indoor map in a way of grids. For likelihood, we follow prior works and incorporate losses such as CGAN loss, intermediate feature matching, and low-level geometry losses. But one key novelty of this work lies in injecting map priors into the reconstruction process. Specifically, our prior about map is based on the commonly used Manhattan water model by computer vision and robotics researchers. As the name suggests, this model is grounded on the regularities in scene statistics and assumes a straight line for most obstacle outer line on the map. A typical example of such a model is, of course, the map of city Manhattan. But recent studies also reveal that indoor floor plans can follow such a design rationale as well, which is shown on the right. Inspired by this, we put four line detectors in our new network model which are convolutional operators with fixed kernels. Each of them covers a particular line direction. As we can see on the right, by incorporating such a prior loss, the generated patch can give more straight corridor reconstruction and reduce mapping artifacts. By further stitching series of such patches, we are able to reconstruct the whole map in the end. All right, so far we have discussed the part of metric mapping. Now let's take a look at the second part of semantic mapping. Exhausting the whole universe of indoor semantics is beyond the scope of this work. Instead, we focus on four key construction objects that semantically describe space accessibility, including horizontal access object, doors, vertical access object, lifts, alternative access object, glass, 
and a long access object was. These four accessibility related objects usually play a crucial role when designing routes for search and rescue. However, even for these four objects, we still have a long trip of challenge to solve. The fact is that many construction objects in indoor environments, ranging from composite walls and doors, consist of multiple slabs made from different materials. For instance, the left figure shows a diagram of a common building wall, in which five different layers are stuck together. Each of the slabs may affect the propagation trait of MM wave signals and result in multiple reflections from the interlock layers. Consequently, the relationship between the signal reflection and the object is hard to model by only using the peak intensity. Luckily, by looking into the range FFT profile, we found that the complex MM wave propagation signatures can be revealed by a segment of interest. A SOI is a neighbor point around the peak by rotating the robot normal to the object surface. Since the resolution of our board is only 4 cm, we empirically set the peak precursor as a segment starting point to effectively avoid peak aliasing. To give you some intuition, here we plot the average SOI of three key objects aggregated from the samples, while the bar on the line is a standard deviation. Clearly, even if a 5-point SOI already indicates very different shapes, for different objects. We hypothesis this is because the SOI has the intensity changes for a range of points around the peak, and therefore able to capture the object patterns under multiple paths. Based on this observation, we further employ a neural network classifier that outputs softmax logits. Depending on the logit values, our model predicts an object label or marked as an alien object out of interest. OK, that finishes the introduction of technical part. Now let's see some implementation. So essential to the system is a mobile robotic sensing platform. Well, a TurtleBot 2 mobile robot is mounted with a TI-AWR-1443 mm radar, a Velodyne VLP-16 LiDAR, and a XSense MU. The working frequency of our radar is from 77 to 81 GHz. It's worth noting that the odometry used for stitching is jointly provisioned by the wheel odometry of the robot and the XSense IMU. We drove the robotic platform to traverse on three floors of building A with the data collection used for model training. These three floors have sufficient differences in multiple aspects. When it comes to the testing, we follow an important rule on cross-testing for both floors and buildings bearing the goal to examine the model generalization ability in different places, including the fourth floor of building A, a new floor of building B, and an arcade for smoke field experiment. For performance evaluation, we adopt two metrics, including the average L1 error and the average intersection of Julia. Both of them are widely used for image or map reconstruction. A large IOU and a small L1 mean better reconstruction. It should be also noted that, given our context of emergency response, manual qualitative inspection is sometimes needed. Now let's see some actual results. To validate if stitching scan images into patches can help, we fix two popular reconstruction models, namely Pixel to Pixel and Pixel to Pixel HD, as a generator and compare their predictions. As we can see on the right, Stitching can consistently give smaller L1 error, as well as a large IOU. This is because without stitching first, overfitting can easily happen as we discussed earlier. We further compare our method against a range of baselines, including the traditional mapping method of line fitting, as well as for different neural networks that have been used in image or map reconstruction. The key difference between ours and the Pixel to Pixel HD lies in whether to use the prior laws. Shown on the bar chart, our method is better than all baselines in terms of both metrics. But the downside is, we also found some imperfection of our generated maps, which is circled in green. We saw that there are some misgenerated ghost areas from the model, 
But when looking into the raw data of MM wave, this part shouldn't happen as it's inconsistent with the MM wave inputs. More interesting, though in different places, we found that LiDAR, as our supervision signal, also has a similar ghost area. So what's wrong there? Well, it turns out that all ghost areas of LiDARs are glass objects, and due to the inherent limitation, LiDAR always sees through these glasses. Unfortunately, our cross-model supervision used LiDAR patches as a supervisor signal that mislead the reconstruction process for MM wave patches. Consequently, the generated map of MM wave is imperfect. Despite of the imperfection, we explore if such a less accurate map can still provide good performance when another robot or person tries to localize. To this end, we implement a particle filter with map matching, and we found that comparable localization accuracy to LiDAR map can be still achieved, even with these less imperfect maps. This clearly confirms the usefulness of our method. Alright, that's pretty much of metric mapping. Now let's have a brief look on semantic mapping. In short, it achieves over 90% F1 score to identify four key access objects and demonstrate certain robustness when tested across sites. We also explored how to deal with alien objects outside of the four classes, but due to time limit, please find more detail in our paper. As a last bit of this evaluation, we empirically found a SOI with a length of 6 points gives the best result, which is equivalent to 20 cm range segment in the range FFT profile. Ok, let's see a demo. As the video shows, Minimap gradually reconstructs a map patch by patch for both cross-floor case and cross-building case. We also give the test in the real smoke field environment where LiDAR and other optical sensors fail, but Minimap outputs very robust result. In conclusion, we propose the Minimap, a first assistant that uses low-cost MM wave radar for indoor metric and semantic mapping. As a proof of concept, we showed the promise of this system towards safety emergency response. However, Minimap still has limitations. More diverse and different places need to be tested before giving this assistance to first responders. Also, as every odometry may drift over long run, we are currently working on MM wave assisted odometry to alleviate this issue. A sibling work called uh, Mini Eagle in this way has been on archive. Putting our system from ground robots to drones is also an interesting direction to go, considering its agility to clutter obstacles. The dataset and source code of a minimap have been open sourced on my website, with more codes coming soon for other spatial perception tasks using millimeter wave radar. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.